most amazing artist. I hope you are having an awesome day today. Welcome to week three of our symmetrical beetles. The first week we printed our symmetrical beetle using a mono printing technique. And last week we used liquid watercolors to paint each section inside of our beetle. As we know, beetles come in all different shapes and sizes and they have different patterns, but they do have some things in common like they all have a hard outer shell to protect their four wings. So beetles are pretty cool creatures. There's lots to learn about beetles. So we have our beetle and now we're going to create the background and we're gonna learn a really cool marker painting technique. For this technique, we're gonna use either warm colors or cool colors. So I'm gonna look at my beetle and I'm gonna see, do I see mainly warm colors? Do I mainly see reds, oranges, and yellows? Or do I mainly see cool colors? Do I mainly see violet, green, and blue? I think my beetle is mainly cool colors because I have a lot of blues and greens down here. I also have blues and greens here. And then I have a purpley color up here. So I have three sections that are cool colors and I only have two sections that are warm colors. So for the background, we're gonna choose the opposite of what we mainly have in our beetle. So if your beetle is mainly warm colors, reds, oranges, yellows, and pinks, then you're going to create your background using cool colors. If your beetle is mainly cool colors, violets, blues, and greens, then in your background you're going to use mainly warm colors. So you're basically doing the opposite of what your beetle is. So my beetle is mainly cool colors, so for my background I'm going to use mainly warm colors. And we are going to use markers for this technique, so all I need is red, I need orange, I need yellow, and I can also put pink in there if I want to. So I have my markers ready to go. And for this background, we're gonna need a new piece of paper, and we're gonna, of course, write our name anywhere you want to on this piece of paper. And then we're going to flip it over, so now our name is on the back. I also have a cup of water here because after we color our entire paper using either our warm colors or our cool colors, we are gonna do something really fun with this water, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And to do this, I'm also going to use a paintbrush. If you're at home, you don't have to have a paintbrush. You can actually just use your finger and dip it in the water and do the same exact thing Miss M is gonna do with her paintbrush. Since we are using water, I do have a messy mat under my work so I don't get any mess on my table. All right, my name is on the back, check. I flipped it over, check. Now I'm ready to get started. And simply what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take any of my warm colors and I'm gonna start coloring this piece of paper. We want most of the white space to be covered up. We don't have to fill in all of the white space, but we definitely want most of it to be colored. So you can switch between your colors if you want to. You could do a pattern if you want to. You could do like a striped pattern. Um, you could do a polka dot pattern with this. You're just gonna color your paper however you want to. I think I'm gonna make mine kind of random and I'm just gonna go back and forth with my colors. I might do a pattern. We'll see what my heart is telling me to do in a minute, but let me get this first row done. But you can see that I'm filling in most of the white space. Yes, there's a little bit of white space showing, but it is mostly filled in. Let me add some pink and see what that looks like. Oh, that's a dark pink. That looks pretty. And maybe next I'll do my light pink color. This pink wasn't working very well, so I'm gonna switch to a different one and try to go over that area, and that's a lot better. So as you can see, I'm just filling in my paper. You can do it however you want to. Maybe you wanna color some hearts in the background. The only thing Miss M is asking you to do is make sure that you fill up most of the white space. Color your entire paper filling up most of the white space and you're using either warm or cool colors. Oh, by the way, while I'm doing this, I am not using the very top of my marker because that makes very skinny lines. I'm using the side of my marker. I'm kind of coloring at an angle 
so it covers a much bigger area and it doesn't take as long. If you were to just use the top of your marker, then it would take quite a while to fill in this whole entire paper because look at all that white space that's being left behind. So I'm taking the side of my marker, not the very top, the side of it, and I'm coloring at a diagonal and it covers most of the white space a lot faster. So that is a little tip for you while you are working on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up coloring my entire paper, trying to fill up most of the white space with my beautiful warm colors, and then I'll be right back to show you the next step. All right, I filled up most of my paper with my beautiful warm colors. Do I still have a little bit of white space showing? Yes, I do, and is that okay? Yeah, it's okay if we have a little bit of white space showing. We just don't want a lot of white space showing. So after you cover your entire paper mostly with a little bit of white space showing, then you're gonna take your water and a paintbrush and you're gonna dip your paintbrush in that water. And we're gonna start painting water onto these marker colors. And since we used washable markers, these Crayola markers are washable. That means they can wash away with water. So the moment I add water to this on my paper, these colors start to turn into a watercolor paint. And they will start to blend together. So I'm gonna keep dipping my paintbrush in the water because I want my colors to be blended beautifully together. And as you can see over here, it's a lot more blended than it is over here. That's why we could leave some white space because when we add water to this, those colors are gonna start bleeding out into each other and they're gonna start blending together to create a beautiful marker painting. And I'm using quite a bit of water, not like a ton, but right now my painting is very thirsty. So I'm constantly going back to my water and adding more water a little bit at a time. I'm not dumping my water on my paper because that would just be a huge mess. I'm using my paintbrush, dipping it in the water and painting it all across my paper. And I'm trying to make sure I'm not leaving any dry spots. I want this entire painting to be covered with water by the time I'm done. So there's half of it. You can see a huge difference between this side and that side. Also, while I'm doing this, I am being very kind to my ballerina paintbrush. I am not squishing her tippy toes. I am barely touching the paper, trying to blend these colors together. We never, ever, ever want to squish our paintbrush's tippy toes because one, that's not very nice, and two, you'll mess up her beautiful bristles down here at the bottom and we want them to be nice and beautiful, just like this ballerina paintbrush is. So while you're using your paintbrush today, please make sure that your paintbrush is dancing across your paper just like a real ballerina would dance across the stage. And look at this, I'm almost done. I just have a little section down here. So let me grab a little bit more water at a time and finish. I'm making sure there's no more dry spots. And after your entire paper has been painted with your water, then you will be done. Now let's talk for a second because this painting is very, very wet. Can you see how shiny it is? That means it's very wet. That's exactly how your painting should look. So when you take this to the drying rack, make sure you don't pick it up like this because then all that water is gonna start dripping down onto your table. It might drip down on your clothes and we don't want that. So when you take this to the drying rack, make sure you're one, holding it, with both hands and you're keeping it flat like you're carrying a lunch tray and take it to the drying rack and then we'll wait for it to dry and we'll be ready to use it next week. I hope you guys have a lot of fun creating your marker painting background using either warm colors or cool colors. I can't wait to see how they turn out. I know they're gonna be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.